this is going to be a look at a day scarier than Halloween. Halloween is a day when people like to willingly walk into all things that are scary. They'll pay money to go into a haunted house. They'll pay money to do a lot of crazy things just to make themselves get scared. Something about being scared is that it gives the flesh a thrill. And deep down, the person knows that what they're doing on that day can't actually hurt them. However, there is another day that's coming. A day much more scary than Halloween. A day that men will also willingly step into of their own free will. Only this day will hurt you if you're unprepared. But on this day, number one, no man can say he is without fear. You know when you go into a haunted house or get on a scary ride, you always have that one guy who doesn't seem to be afraid, so he has the proud look on his face. You know, he's just going through the fun house or whatever it is, and he's got that proud look on his face while his girlfriend or best friend is screaming, and this guy on this particular coming day can't say the words this isn't scary if you look in isaiah 2 and verse 11 it says the lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the lord alone shall be exalted in that day so in that day the only tough guy will be the lord and the men following him on white horses this is the day of the lord now verse 12, For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. So the Lord at the second coming will be much more scary than Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees or Pennywise or the hook man from I Know What You Did Last Summer. The Lord isn't going to have a hook or a machete or sharp things on his fingers. He's going to have a sharp two-edged sword revelation nineteen fifteen, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty god so he is going to stomp through the land and trample the god haters now verse 13 and upon all the cedars of lebanon that are high and lifted up and upon all the oaks of bashan and upon the high mountains and upon all the hills that are lifted up and upon every high tower and upon every fenced wall and upon all the ships of Tarshish and upon all pleasant pictures men have their pleasant pictures they have their motion pictures imagine a packed out movie theater during the end of the tribulation it's playing the new Halloween movie with Jamie Lee Curtis and all of a sudden the Lord pops through the screen on a white horse during his second triumphal entry at the second coming talk about something scary now verse 17 and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be made low and the lord alone shall be exalted in that day not kings not presidents not actors not rappers not athletes, not Anthony Davis, not Zion Williamson, but the Lord will be exalted. Isaiah 2.18, And the idols he shall utterly abolish. The false idols of the land will be destroyed around this time. This time of year, you drive down the road and you see Halloween decorations in people's yards. You see skulls and spiders and skeletons and scarecrows. And people may not be worshipping these things as idols, but it will be these types of things that get trampled by the horses. All these material things, the cars, the houses, the money, the jewelry, all the things that men worshipped instead of God. Now verse 19, And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for a fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Imagine trying to hide from a God whose eyes 
are in every place beholding the evil and the good. The bravest men on earth will hide from the terror of the Lord. As it says in Revelation chapter 6, verse 15, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on a throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now Isaiah 2.20 In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they made each one for himself to worship to be and each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats. So they find out their idols can't save them. The transhumanism movement won't save them. You can't get immortal life without going to the true immortal life. They will throw out their idols and head for the caves. Notice they cast their idols to the moles and bats. Bats. That's big on Halloween. That's because those unclean winged creatures represent devils in the Bible. So it's funny it shows up here on the scariest day ever. Isaiah 2.21 To go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. This is the scariest day. These people are running from the Lord. Now Isaiah thirteen five. They come down from a far country from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation. To destroy the whole land. Notice it says they come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even the Lord. And he's got a weapon. Weapons of indignation. That sounds scarier than any weapons of mass destruction. This day is the true sum of all fears. He's going to destroy the whole land. Not just California. Uh, nobody's going to be going to school or work the next day. It's not just some small disaster like 9-11 or like the tsunami that took place years back or like any hurricane. This is something that will affect everybody all over the world. Nobody's going to school the next day. Nobody's going to work the next day. Isaiah thirteen six. How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. So Jesus is Almighty God. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Imagine the heart attacks. The saying, you scared me to death, will never be more true. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. like a nuclear. It's going to be like a nuclear blast. Imagine seeing big mushroom clouds and big waves of flames coming your way as you hide from Almighty God. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners out of it. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. That's why you better get your sins under the blood. Get yourself out from under the wrath of God and out of his fierce anger. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.10 And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. First Thessalonians 5, nine, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 13.10 For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. So are you afraid of the dark? Will never be a more relevant question. And there ain't no telling what will be in the streets and in the woods and in the back alleys, in your house, under your bed, or right behind you breathing down your neck. 
Isaiah 13, 11, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to seize and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. You know, they have these comic books and movies about the Punisher. But Jesus Christ is the true Punisher. And by His rules, and by the fact that He's a holy, just God, evil must be punished. It says there in verse 11 of Isaiah 13, And I will punish the world for their evil. Evil must be punished. Jeremiah 46, 10, For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts. Notice when it says the day of the Lord, and in that day, you need to look at these things because that's prophecy. Talking about the scariest day that's ever been, that ever will be. And it's not happened yet. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour. The sword shall devour. And you know what men like to see on Halloween? Blood. Gallons of blood. And that same verse said he was going to make his sword drunk with their blood. And on Halloween, they use blood as decorations. They love to see it in the movies. They paint it on their face to see... They paint it on their face so that they can look like a vampire. The only thing drinking blood at the second advent will be the sharp two-edged sword of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 and 3 says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction... Cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. It isn't the rapture here that comes as a thief in the night. This is when the Lord comes back with the saints, and there will be no escape. When they crucified the Lord, they hung him between two thieves, so the Lord comes back as a thief in the night. And they shall not escape, as the verse said. People go into these escape rooms they pay to go in these escape rooms what do they do that it gives their flesh a thrill I'm not saying it's wrong to go in those escape rooms but there's something about trying to escape that gives your flesh a thrill this won't give your flesh a thrill you're going to be terrified trying to escape the lord and his army Something truly scary is a thief breaking in your house when it's dark. And as we said before, the sun shall be turned into darkness. And here comes the Lord as a thief in the night. As the Lord's army, we will enter in the windows like a thief. If you're saved, you're going to be part of the Lord's army. In Joel 2, 9, it says, They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. How many horror movies have you seen where someone is breaking in a home? There is something frightening about waking up out of a sleep to something making banging noises or knocking on the door or the window. We're going to enter in at the windows like a thief. The Lord is coming back as a thief in the night. But he hasn't come back yet. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's what the Lord says. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So God is knocking at your door now, and he wants you to be saved from the wrath to come when He before he comes knocking on your door for different reasons later. Because one day he may knock and he'll be on a white horse, much scarier than any trick-or-treat or... Treat or, or Serial killers arriving at your doorstep. But in the book of Exodus, the Lord destroyed the firstborn of all the houses who didn't have blood of a lamb on their doorposts. If your sins aren't washed by his blood, then you're going to be destroyed. At the first coming of Christ, he shed his blood for you. At the second coming of Christ, he's going to shed man's blood. But you can be saved by his blood. Colossians 1.14 In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. 
Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died by shedding his blood. He died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. He died for your sins because you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And the only way you can be saved is to realize that guilt of sin and come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and put your faith on Him and what He did for you on the cross to pay your sin debt. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a free gift. All you have to do is come to Jesus now. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.